Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at The Breach, which is brought to you by Ludus Magnus Studios. It's for one to four players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 60 to 90 minutes. Planet Earth, the end of the 21st century. The HAB Corporation influences and dominates the globe using outstanding technologies obtained via access to Gene.sys, a secret database of unknown origin which has turned out to be a mine of information and knowledge. However, the corporation is not the only entity that wants to obtain these secrets. The breachers are expert hackers capable of connecting to Gene.sys in order to steal information and increase the power and prestige of their faction. ARM is the security system, a sophisticated artificial intelligence developed by HAB engineers proactively detects and fights against each intrusion attempt to Gene.sys. But it seems that something is going wrong with it. The Breach is a competitive game where players will connect to the corporate database to steal secret information stored within. You, the players, are breachers, digital rebels, acting for personal interest or under the banner of a faction. Within the database, you are represented by avatars, digital projections created for a single purpose, to penetrate the defenses of the firewall and steal more information than your competitors. The main goal of the game is to collect or steal the information tokens hidden within the nodes of the database. The first player to complete their personal objective wins the game and goes on to everlasting glory. So each player gets a player board. Now these player boards are so cool because they kind of look like a hacker's terminal. You have recessed areas. You have areas you're gonna slide your character cards into, different abilities and things that you have, upgrade slots. You've got areas to add information nodes when you collect them and just all kinds of abilities. Of course, you'll be tracking viruses when you get them as well on this board and your threat level. So some really interesting things about these boards and they all do have a different look to them, but they all do basically the same thing. But what really determines the difference is the different characters that you use, the different cards that you put into these boards and so forth. Along with that, you do get your own avatar, right? And the thing about these miniatures that I absolutely love is the fact that they have all this flair to them, like energy coming off of it in a different color, a different type of way of doing these miniatures. And for someone like me who doesn't paint, this adds so much depth instead of just a board full of gray miniatures, which I usually play with. So this is fantastic. I like it a lot. And they did give me one uh, miniature that is production level done. So I'll show you what that looks like. It is Hugo, which I like this character with the big shield. Super cool. Now the areas of the board, this is gonna change up based on the player count, but they are gonna start face down and as you move into the matrix, so to say, as you move into the database, you're gonna be flipping these over and moving around these virtual rooms. And you're gonna be interacting with the rooms and dealing with what the firewall is throwing at you as well as dealing with what your fellow players are gonna be throwing at you. Now, you're gonna be collecting nodes. You'll see there's information nodes like in the edges and in between the different uh, types of rooms that are out in this particular world or database that you're interacting with. And you're gonna be collecting that information by using viruses and things like that. So even when you do get knocked out of the database, moved back to your main board, you know, you're not gonna lose the information you collected, but others can copy it. And information is key in this game. That's the main thing you're trying to do, is move around this world and collect those information nodes based on the objective card that you pulled for this game. The thing is you're just trying to finish that card and get out, so to say. Once you complete your card, you win the game. But if you ever come down to a point where you just can't do anything else because the firewall has become too powerful, well then it'll come down to the player that has collected the most of the information that they need to for that objective card. Next to the main board, you'll see the firewall. This is what everyone is up against. You'll have to deal with your fellow players, but the firewall is really the thing. It's gonna be throwing virtual creatures or avatars at you as you try to infiltrate and get that information. But it will be continually growing in strength and power. There's different rewards for shutting down these creatures that you attack and remove from the board. But in general though, you are going to see this gain in strength and power and become more and more difficult. So that's where the game becomes a race. You're just trying to get the information and get out before the firewall becomes too powerful. 
So every round of the game, the breachers or the players will get to perform actions and then they'll do this net phase, which we'll take a look at. But actions, very straightforward. And I love how these main actions work. You've got your movement, you've got attack, you've got a thing called screen or defense or evasive that you're gonna be using. You've got yellow for movement, red for attack, and blue for this screen option. So what's really cool about this configuration though is when you use your cubes, you get a certain point value for movement or for attack or for evasive or screen, whatever you're doing there. But the thing is that as you do this, these cubes are gonna to start to move and shift it's really this neat aspect and you can reconfigure things and push cubes around in the net phase but this action is pretty cool now to start the game you're going to have two clicks which is two actions and as you gather more information you'll start to gain how many actions you get to perform how many uh, reconfigs you can do and so forth it's all listed here and it's all very very tactile as you gather the information and place it in your board it feels like again like a hacker's tournament I really like that aspect. But those are kind of the main actions and these cubes will rotate around and move and follow the arrows and go to a collection area and then you hope to push them back into the right areas because if you need to move and you don't have any yellow cubes in your yellow movement spot, then you can't move that particular turn. So maybe you're doing that on purpose, you need to re-engage you know, re with it, you need to reconfigure it for the next time to get that big movement in. But those cubes are crucial to what you're doing for those main actions. A few other actions you might take advantage of are things like configure, where you can push a cube around, or you can draw a malware card. Those cards are super powerful, they're specific to you, and you definitely want to gather these because you'll need them at certain times in order to maybe get a plus two when you attack, things like that. So you can also get those cards from some rooms. You'll enter a room, you can spend a movement point and draw one of your cards. Those cards, those malware cards, all are specific to your character. Now, one of my favorite actions in the game is the infect action. You're gonna be rolling a dice, so it is a bit of a push your luck, because there's some bad things that can happen. You could either, the good things, you're gonna get either more additional actions you can perform, or you can lay out your viruses. And again, why are you doing that? You're laying out your viruses so you surround a node so you can collect that information. But this dice will also allow the firewall, very thematic actually, it actually detects your presence. And the levels here at the top of the board are going to potentially increase based on the symbols on the side. And there's all kinds of things that can happen based on where these cubes land. And there's different difficulty levels for the firewalls as well. You can flip over these tracks and so forth. But the thing is, is that you'll do those things immediately. It might just increase the overall level of the firewall, but I like it thematically because it does feel like, you know, the firewall is detected for you trying to meddle. But you also have a threat level on your player board and that potentially could get a threat marker put on it from the firewall. So those are some really fun aspects. Again, it's a push your luck. There's some good aspects to it though and I really do enjoy this particular action because obviously your main goal is to get that information and you gotta lay out viruses. Upgrade is another possible action for you. The thing with upgrades is that you have these white cubes and you'll be moving them from the top of your board to the bottom, which is known as the cheat area. And there's all kinds of things that can happen based on where you move them, but it is varied based on which character you're playing, what the different types of upgrades that will give you, and some have a cost. One of the things though is that the cheat area has a thing called a breach. Some of the areas of the board are not accessible. You'll need to draw a breach card, put it down, and that shows a movement value moving from one place to the other, possibly for spots that you couldn't get to previously. Now, you can move around the board pretty successfully because one of the other things available to you on your turn is to disconnect. You can actually remove yourself from the database and put yourself back on your main board, allowing you to come back in at a gate spot. So you'll see there's some gates and there are ways to move these gates around as well. So you can access more of the database. Some really interesting choices as you try to position yourself to gather that data. After you perform all your actions and it's time for the net phase and you first look to see if you were able to surround any of the information nodes with your viruses. If you were, you gather that node and place it on your player board. Now, that cannot be stolen from you, but if you do get attacked by another player and get enough viruses put on you, then you get knocked out, which leaves you vulnerable to being copied. They can copy the data, they can't remove it from you. So that's a good thing for achieving your goals but it does kick you out of the database for a little bit, but that might be a good thing. You can come back in a different spot. Now, the other thing is that you can configure, set yourself up 
for your next round and your configurations again are based on how much information you have in your player board, how many times you can configure, how many times you can push these cubes around and set yourself up for your next turn. And then you move to the firewall and the firewall gets to go. So the thing here is that after all the players are done, the firewall gets to do its own thing and each player is gonna be drawing an activation card from the firewall, which is going to do various things. And the different types of avatars that come out from the firewall, you have bots, you've got seekers, and finally the big guardian that comes out. The others are gonna be manipulating and trying to stop you from infiltrating the database. And that's really their goal. And you can attack them, they can attack you. And they might even have ranged attacks from one room to the other. In general, you're only attacking in the room you're in. So lots of different things that can happen to prevent you from getting the data that you need. Now, the thing I like though, is just the progression of this firewall. It starts out, it's not bad, but mid game you start to realize that, oh my gosh, things are getting really tough. And it does feel like that race as it gains in strength and power and as you try to gather the data you need before time runs out or before your fellow players gather the data they need. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, there's lots of intricacies in this game. I just gave you a broad overview, especially with the firewall, how it gains in power, those tracks move up, are gonna do various things, the activation cards, are gonna really change up the landscape of what's happening out in these virtual worlds or virtual rooms. So how you deal with that and how you go after the information is key. Now, it does have a very specific thing, very cyberspace, very nerdy, so to say. You're a hacker going after the data, trying to Defeat the firewall, really well done. The theme really shines through for sure. And these player boards and how you use these actions with cubes, I really liked. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it from me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.